entities. This country tried to address specific inequalities that were affecting Kenyans in every region through what is called rural focus, focus for rural development strategy. After that, Mr. Speaker, we moved to regional authorities, Mr. Speaker, in the 90s, establishment of regional authorities to be able to address the challenges that are facing Kenyans in specific regions of Kenya so that they are brought up for development, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what, what then followed after all those ones, the, ninth, the, rural, the focus for rural development in the 1980s and, and the regional development authorities of 90s, now we entered into the Constitution of Kenya 2010. That is the, that, that, those are the steps where we have come from. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 actually subdivided this country into 40, 47 county governments that we have today. Again, why? That Kenya is a country with diverse people. And to be able to actually bring up Kenya in a manner that no government shall discriminate, then the establishments of the county governments so that they have equitable share of resources, Mr. Speaker. Then, what now missed is this bill. Because, Mr. Speaker, after now we've, we've sorted out Kenya into 47 governments so that we can address every regional government shall be able to address the things that are specific to them, then we did not touch the regional authorities because now there are functions that are county government, there are functions that are national government which are run by the regional authorities. Therefore, it is necessary, the bill sponsored by Honorable uh, Peter Lochanabong is therefore necessary to realign the regional authorities with the new Kenya, the new order in Kenya, the establishment of uh, county governments and the national government. Mr. So Speaker, and that is why there is a fourth schedule, that there are things that are specific to be done by the county governments, and there are things that are specific for national government. This bill, therefore, tries to reorganize the regional authorities in a manner that shall conform to the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Mr. Speaker, why it is necessary to do this reform, Mr. Speaker, some of these authorities have become obsolete in terms of performance because they are run by uh, regional kingpins who have lost elections, Mr. Speaker, and breeding corruption in those particular institutions, Mr. Speaker. This is why this bill is necessary because it, uh, uh, under this bill it will be able to solve very specific things that can be done by the county governments using the regional authority and those things that can be done by us at the national government. And therefore, resources will follow functions, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we, 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 we have one, for example, the Kerio Valley Development Authority. Mr. Speaker, the bigger vision of the Kerio Valley, for example, I'm just using an example where I belong, Mr. Speaker, was actually to bring up development in the Kerio Valley region to the level that are enjoyed by others. We lost the mission because there were so many other things that came up, Mr. Speaker, and we allowed the regional authorities to be run by our kinsmen in terms of management, both. And Mr. Speaker, I think going forward in Kenya to avoid what the deputy leader of majority was saying, appointment of board members must meet some specific academic qualifications so that we don't just appoint every Tom, Dick, and Harry to those particular institutions, Mr. Speaker. There are some professional things and technical, technical knowledge that are required to run those institutions, Mr. Speaker. And I, and, and I want to propose that as we even go through this bill, Mr. Speaker, Chairman, there is need now to synchronize and say the boards of an original authority shall not have more than a third of the people in that particular region. Let's make Kenyans who are qualified, who have experience, who have technical knowledge, so that they don't converse in their mother tongue like my colleagues who are speaking here and share and share tenders and everything and they bring down the authorities to the speaker. We need authorities that are able to change lives and bring development in the regions of Kenya in a manner that is enshrined in our constitution, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, even the membership, the membership of the board, some boards, Mr. Speaker, are having 16 members. Others are having nine. There is need to put this House of Regional Authorities in order, not more than seven, for example, Mr. Speaker, so that you have a lean, manageable, 
uh, board and even their secretariat must be people who are knowledgeable and qualified and not specific from those particular regions because if you want to finish an authority very fast, put people from the same region, all of them, they will, they will crumble and it will finish and we shall have waste the taxpayers' money, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, the, the, the regional authorities, the things we are talking about here, Mr. Speaker, re receives exchequer from all Kenyans regardless of how they voted. It is revenue. It is what we do here. It is the division of revenue that we give to the government governments and, 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 and the taxes that Kenyans are paying, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, we must nationalize our institutions so that they are able to be brought up in a manner that will be able to change Kenya. If we are inter interested in changing Kenya, Mr. Speaker, is whenever an institution is established, Mr. Speaker, we let us accept that we must have the right persons in terms of qualifications, in terms of management and experience, so that we are able to bring up development to the rest of the country, Mr. Speaker. I'll give you an example, Mr. Speaker. Again, the tackle uh, uh, hydropower, Mr. Speaker, who was supposed was supposed to generate power, and the water that is remaining is supposed to be used for education in the entire side of Turkana and West Pokot, Mr. Speaker. That is what will change Kenya. We need this country to become food secure. Kenya Valley alone, Mr. Speaker, is as the capacity to produce food and sugarcane without using fertilizer that shall build this country, Mr. Speaker. So, these regional authorities, I accept, Mr. Speaker, must be reformed. They must be reformed in accordance to this bill, and we shall even add some more amendments so that it, it, it actually sets up the entire country in a manner that brings everybody on board, Mr. Speaker, including the county governments. Mr. Speaker, even the county governments need a role. The county assemblies of Kenya need a role so that now, Mr. Speaker, we mark these particular regional authorities with what the county governors have always struggled to establish what is called economic blocks. Mr. So Speaker, there is now need to realign economic blocks together with particular this bill so that we have entities that are economical, that are viable, that are able to generate revenues for our country. And even the, even the auditing of this authority, Mr. So Speaker, today we are dealing with a finance matter and we realize there is some suckers in government, Mr. So Speaker, who are actually receiving a lot of revenue, but they are not on the purview of the control of budget, Mr. Speaker. And that is a recipe for corruption. That is revenue for cheap money where people squander resources from Kenyans who have actually sweat to, to earn a living, Mr. Speaker. So, this particular bill, Mr. Speaker, is the game changer in development of those areas that have always been thrown to drought, those are thrown to floods, those are thrown to banditry, those areas that are also growing. Those who are doing fishing, those who are doing sugarcane, we can be able to bring up the rest of the country to the level that we can say Kenya is a prosperous nation, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this bill with the necessary amendments, and we say let us have a unified country and let us reduce the number of suckers that are non-profitable, that are consuming taxpayers' money, so that we reduce and become economical and we'll be able to change our country, Mr. Speaker. With that, I rise to... Support, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Zamzam Chimba. Asante sana, Mwishmi wa Speaker. Na mimi niweze kuunga mkono mswada uloleto leo bungeni kuhusu maendeleo wa idara ya mikoa. Mwishmi wa Speaker, mengi ya mezungumzwa. Lakini mimi nataka kusema hivi. Licha ya kuwa tunataka maendeleo ya weze uh, kuonekana katika uh, mikoa yetu na katika idara ya mikoa mheshimiwa wa speaker pia niweze kuelezea kuwa na nasikia wenzangu hapa wakizungumza mambo ya ukabila mambo siju ya nini serikali hii ilileta ugatuzi katika katiba yetu ili watu waweze kufaidi kutokana na rasilimali zao mheshimiwa wa speaker mheshimiwa wa speaker hapa katika bunge hili Tunashuhudia unafiki mkubwa sana kwa sababu mheshimiwa wa speaker watu wengi ambao wako katika jamii ambazo ni ndogo ndogo mheshimiwa wa speaker hawajaweza kufaidika kisawasawa kutokana na rasilimali zao mheshimiwa wa speaker na ndio maana mimi naweza kusema kuwa mheshimiwa wa speaker licha ya kuwa tunataka kuweka watu ambao wamestawi watu ambao wameimarika kuchukua idara kama hizi ili kuweza kusawazisha 
uh, rasilimali na, na, na uchumi katika mikoa yetu wa spika lakini tukiangalia hata juzi baada ya kura wa spika watu wamepewa idara nyingi sana ku, wale ambao walianguka kura wa spika na imekuwa idara hizi sasa hazina maana manake kila siku ni siasa zinapigwa katika maidara hizi wa spika hata ukienda kutafuta usaidizi unaambiwa wewe ulikuwa chama fulani hapa kuna chama fulani hapa kuna hivi wa spika wale walianguka wali kura wajifunze kuja kurudi kutafuta wakati ngine mheshimiwa spika sio kuwa walimbikizwe kwa wananchi katika maidara ambapo unapata hata hujui kazi yao wanafanya nini mheshimiwa spika na licha ya kuwa tunataka wale ambao wamebobea katika kufanya shuli katika idara hizi mheshimiwa spika lakini pia tuheshimu gatuzi tukipewa pia watu ambao wanatoka sehemu zile mheshimiwa spika wanaelewa vizuri geografia ya sehemu ile wanaelewa vizuri cultures na tradition ya sehemu zile wanaelewa vizuri matatizo ya wananchi wa pale mheshimiwa spika na kwa hiyo tukipata watu ambao wametoka sehemu zile lakini ni wale ambao wamebobea yani professionals itatusaidia sana mheshimiwa spika uh, mheshimiwa spika Nimesikia mbunge mmoja akisema tuache mambo ya ukabila na nini na mimi nataka niseme hivi mheshimiwa spika tumeshuhudia ukabila mwingi sana wakati wa kura Wakuta, wakati wa kutafuta kura na hii imeshuhudiwa katika nyanja zote mheshimiwa spika isiwe katika maendeleo watu wakiuliza haki zao wanalemezwa na ukabila mheshimiwa spika sisi watu wa pwani tumefinywa sana na ukiangalia idara nyingi katika pwani mheshimiwa spika hata pale pot kazi zinaandikwa ukiangalia msururu ule uliyoandikwa kazi watoto wetu hawamu mheshimiwa spika na ndio maana utaona mbunge kama huyo ndugu yangu Owen Baya ana ule uchungu ambao wa pwani tunasikia tunasema hivi hatu hatupetei ukabila lakini tunasema mtu mcheza kwao na mtu akiwa kwao pate kile cha kwao mheshimiwa spika sisi tukiomba kama wapwani tumefinywa sana rasilimali yetu zinaenda sehemu zingine na mimi nataka kusema kwetu tumekaribisha kila mtu hatukatai mheshimiwa spika lakini idara hizi pia ambazo tumewapa mamlaka watu kutoka sehemu zingine za Kenya ni haki wao kufanya kule kazi lakini wasitufinye ikawa tunaona majina yanatoka kwingine wanaofaidi ni wa sehemu ambazo zinafaidi sana na sisi wapwani tunabaki nyuma mheshimiwa spika na ndio maana wengi wamemtafsiri wame vibaya ndugu yangu wen baya ni ile uchungu anayojua sisi wa pwani tunafuatia mheshimiwa spika sisi tunataka mtu akipewa idara katika pengine kule pot angalie watoto wa kipwani ndio hapa hii 70% inavyosemwa na constitution mimi naiangalia ama nitaenda kuchukua kina mwa fulani kutoka kwetu nyumbani ndio waje wapewe kazi pale mheshimiwa spika kwa mfano mdogo mheshimiwa spika chakula sisi kama wabunge wa pwani tuliweza kuapply kule katika asal chakula cha kupatia wale watu wetu ambao wana njaa mheshimiwa wa spika inatamautisha hata wale viongozi wa dini mashehe wetu wamekwenda kuulizia kwa sababu ni haki yao toka kila mwaka na wanajua wale wanyonge katika jamii wanaweza kupewa hichi chakula mheshimiwa spika walivyokwenda katika idara fulani mheshimiwa spika kwenda kuuliza wakaambiwa hichi chakula kitapewa mtu fulani ambaye ni wachama fulani ndio ambaye atakisambaza kaunti nzima mheshimiwa spika rasilimali zetu zisifanyiwe siasa hii ndio maana unaona hata ndugu yangu wenbaya amekuwa mkali kwa sababu mambo mengi yanafanywa kumfinya watu wengine mheshimiwa spika kama sisi sote tunafuata sheria ya Kenya katika mambo ya idara ya mikoa basi tuangalie kuwa kila mmoja kila mkenya anapata haki yake kulingana na katiba mheshimiwa spika haiwezekani chakula kwa mfano kimetoka kule katika idara ya asal kikija Mombasa anaambiwa nyinyi mashekha mwezi kuchukua chakula kitachukuliwa na mbunge fulani ndio ambaye atasambaza kaunti nzima chakula hicho si cha kufanyiwa siasa mheshimiwa spika na mimi leo napinga hapa vikali ni kisema wabunge wenzangu tuangalie ukishachaguliwa ukishachaguliwa katika kiti usianze kufinya wananchi una vitu vingi ambavyo uwezo kuwafanyia wananchi lakini mambo ambayo yanahusiana na taifa nzima yanahusiana na kila mkenya wewe lazima uangalie kuwa yule mwenye idara amepewa mamlaka ya kuangalia kila mmoja bila kuangalia chama kabila na rangi mheshimiwa spika na ndio maana leo sisi kama wapwani tunasema tumefinyika sana tumefinyika sana sisi idara nyingi watoto wetu wamesoma 
wamesoma mheshimiwa spika hatuwaoni kule sehemu zingine wala hatuwaoni nyumbani ikiwa kama mgao wa idara tofauti tofauti unatokea mambo ya kikazi professionalism mheshimiwa na sisi pia tuna watoto wetu wamesoma kama watapelekwa kwa majani chai tuwaone wako kule tutashukuru wale wakija kwetu tutapokea lakini sio kule kwao wanachukua kila kitu na kwetu pia wanabakura kila kitu mheshimiwa spika huo ndio uchungu ambayo umeona ndugu yangu Owen Baya akisema na sisi tunasema wengi wapo usipo wapo watajichukulia mheshimiwa spika itafika wakati sisi tutaanza kubisha kila mlango tuangalie na statistics na data zinaonyesha vipi ikiwa mpwani katika idara fulani ambayo iko nyumbani ameachwa nyuma basi itabidi na sisi pia lazima tuingilie kati tuangalie tunarekebisha vipi mheshimiwa spika licha ya hayo yote mheshimiwa spika hii bill ni nzuri sana itaweza kuleta maendeleo mazuri licha ya kuwa tunajua counties wanafanya kazi zao na hawa ambao ni regional uh, wenye idara kutoka kila mikoa wana kazi zao sisi tunawapa nguvu isipokuwa mheshimiwa spika wengine hujazana kwenye maofisi hujui wanafanya kazi gani na sisi tunataka kusema hivi uchumi uko mbaya. Hii mishahara ya kudondoa kila mahali kupatia watu wengi ambao hatuoni kazi yao. Mheshimiwa spika hiyo ndio tunasema ipunguzwe idadi. Tupate mtu ambaye aweza kufanya kazi kwa ustadi, mtu ambaye anaeleweka vizuri na uweledi wa kufanya kazi, awezi kufanya hata kama ni watu sita badala ya kumi na moja mheshimiwa spika ama saba kama ilivyokuwa zamani pia mheshimiwa spika sisi tutashukuru sana mheshimiwa spika kama mama Mombasa naunga mswada huu ila nasema urekebishwe uweza kugusa kila jamii ya taifa hili na ugatuzi pia uheshimike ndani ya mamlaka haya watu waangalie kuwa wenye mji wenye mtaa wenye nchi pia wanapata vipi haki zao mheshimiwa spika kwa hiyo naunga asante sana Mheshimiwa Spika. Asante sana kwa mara ya kwanza nimepata jambo ambalo limewaunganisha wewe na Owen Baya. <laughs> Next to speak on this is the honorable Kiri Mugambi. <laughs> I want to thank you Mr. Speaker for this opportunity. Indeed this is a, a key a key bill in this house. Mr. Speaker, the regional development authorities have a history. But Mr. Speaker, times are changing. The way we used to see regional development is no longer valid because there are so many things that have changed. Mr. Speaker, time has come to review the operations of this regional development. Mr. Speaker, some of these regional development authorities were formed because of what was being seen as marginalization of certain areas of this country. Mr. Speaker, there are some country, uh, counties or regions then which were not adorned economically. Mr. Speaker, there was need to uplift the standard of the economies of these legions, hence the creation of regional development authorities. Mr. Speaker, in terms of marginalization, there are some sections of this country which were never covered by these regional development authorities. Mr. Speaker, others were merged together. For example, the Lake De Basin Development Authority. You find it is covering a very wide area of Western Kenya and Nyanza. Mr. Speaker, these organizations at one point lost focus on what they intended to do. Mr. Speaker, time has come to review what is called the marginalization criteria in this country. Mr. Speaker, there is a regional authority called Ewaso Nilo North, which belongs is a center somewhere in Isioro. Mr. Speaker, I border like Kipia and I border Isioro. Mr. Speaker, I share the same geographical conditions, climatic conditions, yet this regional development has no attention of the neighbors where I belong. That's body consistency. Mr. Speaker, the, I mean, uh, the climate change has occurred. There are areas that were being seen to be so dry areas 
other areas. We have some other part of Central Kenya and Eastern Kenya which need not be also managed and given the benefit of regional development authorities. Mr. Speaker, there is no need to bring focus into the mandate of these uh, regional development authorities. Mr. Speaker, many of them focused on water. Many of them focused on irrigation. Many of them focused on limited activities in as far as education is concerned and even security. Mr. Speaker, we need to review the mandate of some of these uh, uh, regional development authorities because of the new constitution. The counties have assumed some of the responsibilities that these regional authorities are performing. The national government is still focusing on ensuring there is even distribution of resources in this country. And that is why I am really a student of the better plan, the bottom economic transformation uh, agenda. Mr. Speaker, these regional development authorities must be aligned to the better plan. And this is the bill that is showing sign that we need to rearrange that. Mr. Speaker, we need to install professionalism in learning of affairs of our authorities in this country. I agree with all the members of parliament who have said what we need in all these uh, 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 authorities and organization in this country is professionalism. It doesn't matter where you come from. Mr. Speaker, if I may look and go and save Coast Province, that's what the Deputy Majority Leader need to embrace. It's not saying that somebody from Coast is being marginalized. How long are they going to claim marginalization? For 60 years they are claiming marginalization. We cannot cause depression to one legion forever. No. We must learn to speak the truth. There is a lot of money which has been pumped in the coast and North Eastern. And it is common sense. So we can't be claiming marginalization 60 years down the line. That is the long concept. Every Kenyan has a light. Every Kenyan has an opportunity to do what is supposed to be done. Mr. Speaker, there is no point of wonder when you speak the truth. And when the truth is known, we give What's the... What's the point of order, Honorable Owen Bayer? Let's listen to... Uh, you know, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Rindikiri, uh, in spite his gray hair, uh, lacks facts in what he's saying. It is factual that the coast region has been underserved for many years, for the 60 years that he's talking about. It is factual that the most poor regions in this country are in the coast. Coast Development Authority was set up by the late Carissa Maita in this parliament to mitigate against underserving the populace in the coast and therefore coast regional development coast development authority was set just for that purpose to mitigate underdevelopment so the honorable uh, indikiri is this to think to look at facts facts are in uh, the in the standing orders it is factual that underdevelopment has been there for the last 60 years so stick to facts very well leader. Coast has been underserved so do not paint a picture which does not exist. It is facts. This parliament believes order, in facts order, and correct Honorable Baya. Mr. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. You know, as I said, you cannot deny the truth. And there is no fact <laughs> in according to you. I am sure, let's not play politics on this. We are dealing with a very serious matter. In fact, uh, before you proceed, Honorable Bayer should have actually produced the facts. Yes, but correct. But meanwhile, proceed. Let him tell the fact because, you know, a kid cannot continue crying forever. No. We must be serious. We must leave what we are preaching. Bayer is part of the better program of this country. And he cannot play a game negativity. No, that is wrong. And he has been advised by senior counsel, my brother Amolo. If you, have t you can't take the advice of anybody else, please take the advice of senior counsel Amolo. He has gray hair like me, and that's where you draw wisdom. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of spending of money in, with these organizations. And uh, Mr. Speaker, where are the change, uh, change, uh, uh, we are appropriating money to the national, uh, the regional uh, organizations, then we must have a national outlook. Mr. Speaker, time has come. 
We either say these are regional uh, organizations, authorities that are funded by the checker appropriation through National Assembly, or we transfer their functions to the counties. And therefore, we also increase the funding of the counties so that they can perform the same uh, functions. Mr. Speaker, it is very important for this country to go back again. We must review because there are some counties which are not covered by this properly by these organizations. The Tana and other liver, they cover very limited areas of Meru County, where I come from, and it's specifically Bode constituency. It is not under any of these authorities. Yet I share the same geographical conditions with Laikipia and Isioro. Meaning, as we push through these authorities, we must ensure all the areas that have similar climatical and weather conditions, they are rammed up together. And therefore, I'll ask the drafters and the proposers of this bill, we must now reorganize and see the areas of coverage. Because if you don't do that, we will only be discriminating against the traditional known, no, 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 no known counties. Mr. Speaker, I join the other members and they say time has come for us not to start going backward but to move forward. I therefore support this bill. The Honorable Jackson Kosgiri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From the onset, I want to support the Regional Development Authority Bill. It has been said, Mr. Speaker, that purpose dictates priority. The Regional Development Authorities were created and tasked with a unique mandate in the progression and development of our country in trying to fulfill the agenda of developing Kenya